Yo, how is it Bouncing Gang? Welcome back to another video. Today we're doing another question and answer because I haven't seen you guys, you know, heart on heart, one on one in a hot second. Uh, the last question and answer video was about a month ago. I wanted to do it again. So let's jump into your questions. What do you really want in the next iPhone? I want more than anything else, something that has not even been rumored, but something that should have been here as the flagship feature on the iPhone XS. I'm talking about the ProMotion 120 hertz display. Apple has had this on the Pro version of the iPad for I think two or three years now. It's twice the frame rate of the iPhone at 10s or any iPhone screen. So instead of 60 hertz refreshing at 60 times every second, it refreshes 120 times every second. So scrolling is buttery smooth. Here's a rough comparison that I made about a year and a half, two years ago now. But ProMotion is so good. If you've ever touched an iPad Pro, one of the newer ones, and said, why does this look so much better than the iPhone? It's because it has a ProMotion display. Nobody's saying that's coming though, and Apple's had this tech on the iPad for a couple of years. I don't know what's stopping them from putting it on the iPhone because there's not many 120 hertz phones out there, and I think the technology is so good. It makes the screen, in my opinion, look twice as good and twice as smooth because it's literally doing that. Do you think a foldable iPhone would be useful? No, no one wants foldable phones. I've seen some Android phone makers come out with concepts or actual to market variants of foldable phones, and they look so bad. They're ugly, they're clumsy, you have to fold and unfold something to use it or expand the screen. Now with tech, obviously things change and I could eat my words in a couple of years. I just think it's sort of like, but could we do it? And then some stupid tech lead is like, well, yeah, nobody else is doing foldable phones. Let's go, Josh. Let's make the first foldable phone. And then these guys are going to be out of a job in two years. Dark mode on iOS 13, you think? Yes, yes, it's coming. Bloomberg said it's coming. Nobody's saying it's not coming. And I'm definitely putting all my eggs in the one basket that it is coming. But it's time. And, and I think it's realistic that it will actually be coming this year. Do you think Apple should put GPS trackers in each individual AirPod and a GPS in the case? I've never thought about that before, but that would be super cool. They have Find My AirPods, where you can technically find your AirPods if you've lost them, but every single time I go to lose my AirPods, and then I'm like, oh, I'll check the app to see if I can actually find them, it says you're too far away from them to be located, which makes me question why there's a Find My X feature if you can never find your AirPods or find what you're looking for. <laughs> Obviously, they need to be connected to something to connect to the internet, like your phone, but I think that would be really, really cool, at least in the case. If Apple put GPS in the next AirPods case, that would be so, so helpful, just because it is a small little package. If you lose it, you can look it up and find my iPhone. It would be a dope feature. Unfortunately, we just haven't heard that rumored or leaked in any way. Most underrated feature on iOS. I don't know if a lot of people know about this one, but in settings, and then if you go under display and brightness, there's a feature called Night Shift. And Night Shift is incredible. I use it every single day. I have it turned on from uh, sunset to sunrise the next day. What it does is changes the color temperature of your screen. So right now you can see it's emitting a lot of blue light. Apparently that's not really good to look at before bed and it makes sense. Like it kind of hurts my eyes if I do it for a long time. With Night Shift enabled, it's gonna make your screen warmer so it's so much more pleasing to look at. I use it all the time. It's very subtle. So on the home screen, you really couldn't tell like this that I, I use Night Shift, but amazing feature. Got added back in I think iOS 9 or iOS 8 and I've been using it I think since the day it came out. What do you think about the idea of Apple smart glasses? So this is an idea that Bloomberg keeps bringing up. It's something that Apple is really pretty much confirmed to be working on, an augmented reality set of glasses. I mean, imagine to put on a pair of glasses like this and suddenly you can see augmented details about weather or where you're walking through Apple Maps. Apple's got a big focus on AR. I would not be surprised if they came out with AR glasses. My Biggest question for Apple though, I think this is a big question for anybody that is working on a set of augmented reality glasses. It's how are you gonna convince people that don't wear glasses, that aren't into tech, to wear augmented reality glasses. I wear glasses right now, I've been looking into contacts, but right now I wear glasses, so switching over to glasses with augmented reality features wouldn't be that hard. But I know a lot of people that don't wear glasses have no desire or need or want to wear glasses, so I don't know how Apple would ever reach those people and make glasses worth it for them. So I'm sure there's practical application. I'm sure that some people will be interested in augmented reality glasses that can show you things as you're walking or driving somewhere. I just am very skeptical of mass market adoption for that idea because I don't see people just being like, yeah, 
Yeah, I'm rocking these AR glasses. iPhone SE 2 or iPhone 10 R mini, do you think it's a good idea? I think it is a good idea. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but recently on apple.com on the refurb store or the Clarence store, a $200 iPhone SE, I think it's 200, 299, has been popping up and it's been going in stock and then selling out like in minutes. I think people really want the iPhone SE, even though it's from 2016. And I think there is space for the iPhone SE 2. Speaking of which, this isn't corroborated. I don't know if this is even real, but uh, I saw E.B. Luke, who's a pretty renowned leaker on Twitter the other day, retweet an article claiming it to show a render of the iPhone SE 2. Uh, take this with a massive grain of salt because I haven't looked into it that deeply, but I would like this phone. I would like this phone so much. I don't know if I would use it over the iPhone XS, but if Apple had like a 4.2 inch screen on here, it'd be so good. We had heard the iPhone SE was coming in 2018, a new one and it never did. So maybe that's gonna be Apple's one more big thing that they're working on for the March event. I didn't talk about it in my video yesterday just because there's no official rumors about it, but I would love to see the iPhone SE return and I think a lot of you would as well. So let me know your thoughts on an iPhone SE 2 down below. Did you find some leaks about the Apple Watch Series 5? No, what's weird about the Apple Watch in general is that it's a huge product for Apple now and I wear mine every day. I love the Apple Watch Series 4 so much but we never hear rumors about it. Like rarely do we hear rumors about the new Apple Watch, aside from like a month or two ahead of its release. Uh, so we'll start hearing about it, I think in June, July, August, uh, sometime three or four months ahead of release. We just don't know that much about it or really anything about it yet. I cannot recall even one rumor talking about the Apple Watch Series 5. So for now, we'll just have to be content with the Apple Watch Series 4, but know that almost for sure, Apple's working on a new one for September of 2019. Would you buy the iPhone 11 on release? Of course. it's. My my job and I would be failing you guys here on YouTube if I skipped an iPhone or didn't buy it. Like, I gotta tell you guys how it is so you know whether or not you should buy it or you should look at it and you should care about it. And I think you should definitely care about the iPhone 11 because it's looking to be pretty cool. It could actually end up looking like this. What do you think about the FaceTime fiasco by Apple? It's really bad. They should never have allowed this to happen. They've said time and time again, we're reviewing our processes. We're gonna make sure that we uh, have people review this. They got a bug report on this like a week before they actually acknowledged it and it didn't get escalated to the right level. So nobody heard about it, even though I think some some kid's mom reported it who was playing Fortnite. It's really a random story. That being said, it should have never happened in the first place. There should never be a bug that allows you to hear someone on the other line before they pick up. It's really bad. Apple's partially patched it or almost completely patched it server side, but group FaceTime is disabled now. And you're gonna have to update to 12.1.4 to get group FaceTime back. According to Mac rumors, Apple is permanently disabling group FaceTime on iOS 12.1.3 or below. So it was a bad deal. This should never happen. And I hope that this is the bug that makes Apple actually change the behavior. Do you think the iPod Touch still has a place in Apple's lineup? For sure. Uh, it's not the product for everybody. It's not the product for me right now because I have an iPhone, but there's a lot of younger people that want to get involved with iOS. They want things like iMessage, but they can't afford an iPhone. And the iPod Touch is a really great place to start there. That's why I'm so excited for Apple to refresh the iPod Touch 7th generation with an A10 Fusion chip. That is the current rumor. We just don't know if that iPod is coming in 2019 or maybe even into 2020, but Apple is not confirmed to be working on a new iPod Touch, but pretty heavily rumored at this point. And I, I think it does deserve a place in Apple's product lineup. Just looking at it in the from the perspective of some people can't afford the iPhone, but I think they could afford a two or three hundred dollar iPod Touch. Which phone are you currently rocking? I've got the iPhone XS right here. I tried the XS Max, I didn't like it. I have a 10R just sitting over there, but I don't use it. I think the 10S is the best phone out right now. The 10S Max is good too. It's pretty much the same thing, just bigger, but I'm rocking the 10S. It's the perfect size for me. I love the camera, and of course, this is an Apple channel, I'm rocking an iPhone. What device do you use more than you use your phone? I wanna say my Apple Watch, but I'm also on my iMac Pro behind me so, so much. And I'm a student, so I carry my MacBook Pro around with me to classes all day. So Mac, outside of the iPhone, I'm definitely on this the most. I hate looking at my screen time and reflecting on the fact that I was looking at the screen for four hours a day, because I don't exactly know if that's entirely healthy. I'm just gonna say it is for now, but I'm not entirely sure. And I'm really happy that screen time isn't on the Mac because looking at that screen and then looking at my iPhone all day would probably be like five or six hours a day of my retinas getting burnt to a crisp by retina displays. I don't think that actually happens and like I don't have eye strain from using computers, but I'm definitely on tech a lot, but I feel like I'm pretty responsible. Like it doesn't 
I'm having like a like a self checkup right now. I'm like, what? I think my usage is okay. Like, I, I'm I'm definitely right, guys. Like, affirm me in the comments down below. So that's gonna wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, hit subscribe for more. It's always so fun to do these. I love doing these so much. Um, thank you guys for letting me. To, Thank you for letting me to what? Thank you guys for giving me this platform to share my thoughts and opinions. I had a lot of fun making this video and um, just wanna say peace out. I'll see you guys in my next video.